So in this next question here, we see that it says, how much more sugar do you need to buy? So everyone, quick question before we really get into it. When we think about how much more of something we have to buy or how much more of something we have left, you know, what operation are we typically thinking of to find that gap, to find what is left? Yeah, typically to find out how much is left, how much more we need, that's going to be subtraction. Because if you think about it in the sense of, let's just take a quick little detour. If we say, hey, we have $6 and you know the game that we want to buy is $20. How much more money do we need? Well, that's going to be subtraction and we'll get $14. So before I continue... Does that little example make sense before we get into this problem that we see in front of us? Again, how much more of something that we need typically translates to subtraction. So now let's go ahead and get into it then. Let's delete this and here we go. So a recipe calls for this much sugar. If you wanna make one and a half times that recipe and you already have this much sugar, how much more sugar do you need? Okay, everybody. So to figure out how much sugar we need, here's how I'm thinking about it. It sounds like to me that if I want to find how much more sugar I need, we need to understand how much sugar we need in total and we'll subtract how much sugar we have and that will give us how much is left. Does that make sense, everyone? To get how much more we need or how much is left to buy, we'll figure out, hey, how much do we need in total? How much we need in total? And we'll subtract how much we currently have. And that's it. And we're good. So, boom. If you already have this plan in your head, you're good. You, you already got it correct in principle. Now we're going to see if our confidence with calculation, it can follow through. Let's see. So here, to get how much we already have, well, we already have that. It's right here. We already have 1.75 cups. So boom, that's what I'll be subtracting. 1.75 cups. Now, how much do I need in total? Well, that's gonna be given to us over here where we say that a recipe calls for 2.5 cups, but we wanna make 1.5 times the recipe. Everyone, what operation does that tell us to do? We have the 2.5 cups for one base recipe, but we're trying to make one and a half times that. Yeah, that's multiplication. Again, the phrase times, that really gives it away. So let's get into it. We have 2.5 multiplied by 1.5. I'll go ahead and perform that right over here. And once we do that, we have 5 times 5, which is 25. Carry the 2. Then we have 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 2 is 12. Next up, we are going to place a zero so we can start multiplying right there. So we have 5 times 1 and 2 times 1. Add that back up, and we have 5, 7, and 3. Everyone, how many decimal places are we going to bring back? Yeah, in this case, we're bringing back 2 because we have 1 right over here and another right there. So we have 2 total, so we'll go 1, 2, and so that'll be 3.75. So there we are with that. Boom, let's move you over here. Well, let me go ahead and grab all of that. Perfect. Move you over here. And let's get the 3.75 where it belongs. Oh, look at how convenient that is, everybody. So with that said, 3.75 minus 1.75 conveniently leaves us with a final answer of two. Two cups. Right there, that's how many more cups we need to buy. Because again, we need 3.75 in total. We already have 1.75. Subtract, and there's the gap. That's how much is left. Two cups, which is answer choice D. And there we go. There's the next one in the books. So here is a new question. And let's take care of it carefully. Let's make sure we got this here and understand those finer details. So the first thing I notice here is that we want to know how far apart are they? So really briefly, think about it and answer this question. We want to know how far apart anything is from each other. 
What is that? A distance, a rate, or a time? You know, get that in your head immediately. And that should come off immediately as a distance. So here we are. We see immediately that we want to know how far apart they are. That's a distance. And let's understand the context here to really understand how we're going to calculate this distance. Is it going to be one distance rate time or two distance rate time implementations? Let's find out. So here we go. Two trains travel in opposite directions. All right, immediately, everybody, when I see that, when I'm thinking about rate problems and opposite directions, what do I think about in terms of those rates or distances? Addition, absolutely. So let me highlight that so I can express. Traveling in opposite directions, we will add those distances. We will add the distances or add the rates. We can only add the rates if they are moving at the same time, which they're not. It says train A starts first at 70 kilometers per hour, and train B starts two hours later at 50 kilometers per hour. After five hours from train A's start, how far apart are they? So let's take care of business here, everybody. We have different movements. We don't have the, moving, the movement happening at the same time. So what we will do is we will treat these as individual distances. And because they're going in opposite directions, we'll add. So here we go. Here is train A and here is train B. And let's go ahead and separate them a little bit. And here we go. Train A, I will grab right here. 70 kilometers per hour. Sounds good. Rate equals 70 kilometers per hour. Then it says train B starts two hours later at 50 kilometers per hour. Sounds good. Rate equals 50 kilometers per hour. And then from there, my party people, when I see that, we're asking the question after five hours from train A's start. Okay, everybody. So this is where things really, you know, we got to get careful. We got to be really careful here. It says that train A has been going for five hours. So I'm going to write that right over here. Train A, the time, five hours. However, my party people, however, what's the time going to be for train B? I see the number two and I see the number five. It said that train B started two hours later. So should it be two hours? No, it should be three. It should be three. And here's why we see here. Let's go ahead and use the, this little number line over here. And let's say that we have, you know, one hour, two, three, four, and then five. That's the whole five hours. We see that train A is traveling for the entire five hours from beginning all the way to the end. However, train B starts two hours later right here starts two hours later. So what that means is train B doesn't start here, doesn't start here. Well, it does start there because I should mark this as zero. Excuse me there. Let me just make this a little more sensible. Perfect. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. We start two hours later. So we start right over here. Everybody, if we start train B right here, how many hours is that? One, two, and three. That's three hours. Because if we start two hours later, we got three more hours to hit five hours. So there we are. The time that we're spending here for train B is going to be three hours. And we've already mentioned that we will add these distances together to get that total distance apart. And so when we commit to that, we have our distance here for train A being 70 times five, and that's gonna be 350. Then for train B, we have distance equals rate times time, so 50 times three, and that's gonna be 150. So we have 350 kilometers and 150 kilometers. We'll add that together and we get our final answer. 350 plus 150 gives us 500 kilometers, my party people. And there we are. That's why answer choice B is the correct answer.